So, on right triangles. On right triangles, there's all these different things we can do. But like I said, I think some are silly. When they're right triangles, there's what's called the leg-leg congruence theorem. That if two legs are congruent to two legs, then the right triangle's got to be congruent. But when you see that, what do you think of? It's side angle side. Do we need anything brand new? Yeah. No. Huh. Forget it. It's, oh, you don't even know what a side <laughs> angle side is yet. Come on. <laughs> okay. You gotta let you get, you start taking my advice, and I think maybe you'll do a little better. Okay. So this one, it's side angle side. So do we need the leg leg congruence theorem? No, we don't. Next one, hypotenuse angle says if the hypotenuse is an angle of one right triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse and the corresponding angle of another right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Angle. Yeah, that's angle, angle, side. So do we need this? No. Okay, let's go to the next one. Leg angle congruence theorem. If one leg and an acute angle of a right triangle are congruent to a corresponding leg and acute triangle of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. That's angle side angle. It's something I just saw that was kind of weird on this one. Look at this. They say if one leg and an acute angle of a right triangle. Did they need to say acute angle? No. It's silly. Kind of like saying guys on the football team. It's repetitive. Okay. So this one, that's angle side angle. We don't need it. Okay, this one though, hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. If a hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and corresponding leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. What would this be? Ang it'd be angle side side, which we can't do that, can we? Now, the, re the thing before, we said that, hey, those can't form an angle side side might form two different triangles. And you might remember the way we justified it was this. We drew this situation and we said, hey, I've got that side that, okay, thank you. Well, there you go, communication, you guys are getting better. Okay, um, so in that situation, I said angle side side because what could I do with, and I said that wouldn't work because what could I do with this other side? Yeah, I could swing it in, right? And I would still have the same exact information. Okay? But it just so happens if this side is exactly the magic length that makes it a right triangle, could we swing it out and have it still connect? No. Could we swing it in and have it connect? No. So there's only one triangle formed by this situation. And it's a hypotenuse and a leg. So what that does is it opens up just one more option for us. So we've got, not only do we have side, 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 angle, side. We've got angle, side, angle. We've got angle, angle, side, and now we've got HL. HL means if a hypotenuse and a leg on this triangle are congruent to this hypotenuse and a leg over here, then what can we conclude? Triangles are congruent. So these are all acceptable postulates with which we can prove two triangles congruent. So there's your list of five. That list will never grow. That's as long as that list can be. Unless you want to throw leg leg in there and use it instead of angle side ang or side angle side. You know, that's just kind of goofy. Okay? So HL. So when are we going to use situations like that? Well, if I have a triangle like this and a triangle like this, maybe we can even do a back to back. And I say um, those two are congruent, and that's a right angle. I know that's enough for these two triangles to be congruent, because I got boom. Are the hypotenuses equal? Yes. Is there a leg equal in both? Yes. Is it a right triangle? Yes. If it's an HL, we can say that they're congruent. Okay. So we're going to talk about. It. Um, <clears throat> deal with that today. HL is just a simple extension. Okay, it's not something that should give you great grief.
Okay. Now we're going to go on to section 4.6. Isoskeles and equilaterals. Okay. Isosceles and equilateral triangles. You bring the wrong book? That's all right. You won't need that till later. Okay. So basically, first thing we got to understand is is in anatomy here. If I have an isosceles triangle with those two sides equal. Okay. There are parts that we've got to understand. These two sides are called legs. And this is my base. Okay. And I want you to understand your base is not always on the bottom. Your base could be somewhere else. So if I would go like this, What's my base? BC is my base, and my legs would be A, A, B, and AC. Okay? So like say if I say if I take um say if I take Colton. He's standing there. He's got a white base. Here's his legs. If I knock him down on the floor, well, these are still his legs. And then his base is not on the floor anymore. Smooth move, X Lax. Stuco? Yeah. Okay. There's other parts too. This is called my vertex angle. Okay. And these, if you're going to give these angles a name, what would you call them? Base they're base angles because they're formed by the base. Okay base angles. Okay. So before we under, you know, start talking about all these different parts and pieces, you got to understand what the vocabulary is. Okay? So There's two theorems. Iso triangle theorem says um if two sides are equal, the op angles opposite them are equal, i.e. Base angles are equal. Base angles are equal. Okay? In any isosceles triangle, you get two base angles equal. And they're always the ones that are opposite. Okay? So it depends upon what sides I give you are equal. Let's do something like this. I'm going to make it terribly unclear. What if I said AB is equal to AC? Then what angles are the same? Angle C and angle B. Because A, B, and A, C are right here. The angles that are opposite, and those opposite angles are equal. Okay. On the other hand, if I said B, C equals A, C, if I say, and this one I'm going to go ahead and label, um, if B, C, and A, C are the same, what angles are equal? 
A and B. Okay? So, that's, you know, just kind of the basic stuff. If you label them, you can obviously see which one's your vertex angle, and then the other two have got to be equal. Not a big deal, really. Okay? So, there's another thing. Isosceles triangle, converse. Gee, converse means we're going to go backwards. Basically, it says this. If two angles are equal, then the sides opposite are equal. Okay? So, Caden's the only one gone. Is Caden here today? Yeah, he's changing. Okay, got it. So in this particular situation, let me just kind of come up with A, B, C. If I said angle B is the same as angle A, what can we conclude? A, B equals C, D. So angle A equals angle B. That shows that the opposite angle, opposite side A, C, equals BC. Another thing we could do here too is we can say, okay, there's my two angles. Well, that's obviously my base. Those are my base angles. So that's my base. So then the other two sides have to be equal. Other two sides have to be equal. Okay? So. So if I tell you something like this, yeah, question? Because if so, you're probably... Oh, I'm sorry. AC equals BC. Okay. So if I tell you something like this, do you guys believe everything I say? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's snowing. It was. It was snowing. I know, but right now, it's not snowing. And I'm telling you it's snowing, and you're like, hey, yeah, it's snowing. No. So if I tell you this, do you believe me? It's my job to tell you the truth when it comes to mathematics, huh? Okay. Well, it's my also my job to tell you or to get you to question why. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Don't write this down. We're just going to do a quick proof of the isosceles triangle. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so, so what I want to do is I want to prove that the base angles are equal. Okay, so I get A, B, C. So my given is going to be A, B equals A, C. And I want to prove what? So I'm trying to prove the isosceles triangle theorem. Angle B equals angle C. So this is what proofs in my mind are used for on the most part, is to justify something we think might be true. Okay, so here we go. Given. Um, okay. I'm going to draw a line that's not currently in my drawing. What's that called? Auxiliary, Auxiliary line. Is that legal? Yeah. yeah, as long as we're doing something that's possible. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'm going to ask is, is there a point D on on this BC that's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's just say D is right there. Okay. So I'm going to say BD equals DC. How do we know that? Um, I'm just going to say an auxiliary line property because it exists. Okay. Um, there exists a point D. So if I draw this. And let's label for some things. AB is the same length as AC. Does anybody see where we're going with this? What are we going to do? You, you help me. 
AD equals AD. Why? Reflexive. And then four in the triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD. Side, side, side. Five. CPCTC, which has to be used after triangles are congruent or uh, side, side, side. Angle B is equal to angle C. Okay. Does this step freak you out? Okay. Yeah. Let me just ask this question. Does, point, does such a point exist? Yeah. Yes. So we can add whatever we want as long as it exists. Okay. Um, so then I connected that and go, hey, look at that. And then we could also do all these other things too. So this first one, we said that those two are equal. What can I say about angles one and two? They're both equal, so they have to be 90 degrees. So then if I drop it down to the middle, it's perpendicular. And what's true about angles three and four? They're equal, so um, if I drop this down to the middle, what does it do to this angle? It bisects. There's all different sorts of things that happen in an isosceles triangle. Okay? And it all comes from this basic proof right here. So, today we're not getting, we're not getting totally uh, deep dive into 4.6 with isosceles and equilateral triangles, but we're just um, getting across the main information. So here's what we're going to do. Um, Okay, well, we're out of time. No. <laughs> Let me go grab it. Uh, today, I, I, I misunderstood. I misunderstood. So today I'm here the whole time. Page 282, 27 through 30, 35 through 38. Raise your hand if you're going to be gone tomorrow. Nothing. Yeah. Yes. Page 2, 8, 4, 7 through 9, and 14. That's, piece of, that's, that's um, hypotenuse leg information. Okay, yes. 35 through 38. Okay. And then we have page 289. This one's going to be the real fast part. 9 through 20. Okay. For those that showed up late. Yes. Yes. For those that showed up late. Um, we have a new way to prove two triangles congruent. Okay, you remember how you, you made a comment the other day that if when I was talking about an angle side side situation, how we could swing it in, swing it out, and you said, well, what if it was 90? There'd only be one. Do you remember that comment? Because I do. Um, so what that tells us is, is that if we have a hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle, then we can say they're congruent. So today, for those of you guys that showed up late, HL is another way that we can show two triangles are congruent. So we've got these four, me five methods. Yes, sir. Do we already do 27 through 30? Yeah. Okay, well then start at 35. So yeah, HL is just like angle side angle, but if we have a hypotenuse, we can go to hypotenuse, a leg can go to a leg, we can go, aha, those triangles are congruent. Um, yes, it was, I will write it up, it's 12, 13, 14 on uh, practice sheet with graphing calculators. Yes, yeah. That's the or. I always remember the and looks like an A. Yeah. An and looks like an A. 
maybe an or you could think everything is going to funnel in and be part of it. I don't know. 